I know it's like before Census Fail, and because um, you were with them right before Census Fail, weren't you? Color Morale. Uh, yeah, there was between the last show that the Color Morale played and the first show that I played with Census Fail. That was July, August, September, October, December. There was four months. That was there was four months of in between time. So not a lot. Okay. But yeah. It was just a four month gap in between bands. And how long were you with the color morale? Uh just just about a decade. Wow. Decade, yeah. No, okay. it's been yeah, ten or ten or eleven. It was like ten or eleven years. Okay. What what yeah, was no. what was that like to see that that split from them? At, like with being with the band for so long and then going with a bunch of guys you didn't know or didn't know anything about. What was that like? Oh, like the transition? Very I I was having a lot of anxiety um from it because it was just like Colin Morale was my like high school band yeah. that got signed and became like a thing like we established like relationships with each, with each other at a very young age so it, it wasn't just like a band of like a bunch of like hired musicians and we like did a thing and like whatever it was just like best of friends being in a band doing right. it for years and then all of a sudden so it was like a straight up straight up breakup like that's what it felt like it felt like the end like going through like a heartache an ultimate girlfriend heartache. Yeah. <laughs> just like four other dudes just being like, fuck, man, this is like so hard to do. But yeah, it was hard. It was that, that was one of the hardest things to go through so far. Yeah. When it comes to like music things in my life. So yeah, it was hard. It was very hard. Um, let's get into gear a little bit. Were you, you were with mm-hmm. SJC with, the color morale and then you just joined dw did you join dw while you're with census Phil, or is it right before uh no i actually joined i joined dw in 2016 so that was um okay. so that was still the color morale okay so i had been with i had been with dw for yeah yeah four years or so yeah up. why the change why the change yeah uh, Cause be, I, and and the, re- the reason i ask is yeah. because um, I, I've met Mike and, and those guys before and um, mm-hmm. have actually interviewed Mike for this before and um, mm-hmm. it seems like SJC um, I'm wearing an Orange County shirt but um, I saw that I was uh, waiting to compliment on it very nice t-shirt yeah. <laughs> thanks man I, I, I really wish that they didn't sell out to Guitar Center but it, you know ahead. things change but um, <laughs> but it seems like SJC players Seems like a lot of like warp tour kind of bands, mm-hmm. so to speak, are leaning toward the SJCs and Truth and those companies and stuff. Um, but DW is like the cream of the crop. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, what what was that like? I guess I guess not so much why the change, but what was that like for you? Um, evolving, going from SJC and how however long you were with them into a company like dw well dw was always has has always been like i view them as like top shelf liquor (laughs) they're like (laughs) you can't get for me it's like you can't get any any higher than that so that was always like the end all goal always was right was dw um at 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 a pretty young age um and i uh i had i Originally applied for DW 2011 or 2012, and I got I straight up got denied, which was awesome for me because it was just like they they sent me a letter back, which I'm sure it was a stock letter saying like we appreciate or somewhat stock re- response. We appreciate you reaching out. Um, basically, we don't feel like you're there yet as a yeah. musician or like as a and maybe not as a drummer, but it's just kind of being like you got to put in more time, and we'll see how things go. But like, keep up to date with us, and I kind of use that as like motivation to be like, someday, motherfucker, someday I'll come back and be like, I, I will, I will try to impress better next time. Right. Um, so there was always that 
background motivator and like at the time, two thousand yeah, so the, like two thousand twelve is when I got the SJC endorsement. So then I started I was just like I reached for like the biggest company that I could think of. Sure. Denied and then I was just like, Well, all a lot of the bands in our the genre that the Cole Morale played in played a lot of truth, played a lot of SJC uh Basically, it was like truth and SJC everywhere, and it was, which was at the time, you know, SJC didn't really have a lot, a lot of like insane, like there was no Jay Weinberg of, of, of Slipknot, or there was no like Trey Cool of Green Day on SJC. Right. There was a lot of my like peer, my my peers, and my like my drummer friends playing them. So I was just yeah. like, I like SJC, I like SJC the best. Like, I thought their products were the most superior for, like, at the time, like, a more boutique, smaller, smaller, you know, level drum company. Mm-hmm. So, I re- and, and they're from the East Coast, um, which I have a soft spot for East Coast because I'm, I'm like, an East Coast sports fan. And right. my, half of my family is from the East Coast. So, I just felt like I, uh, I connected with them on a personal level way better. Yeah. Then they say like a truth that was like up in Portland or or wherever they they were at up in the Northwest. So yeah, no, I, I reached out to I reached out to SJC and Mike and there was a guy named uh, Geo was my A and R there, mm-hmm. which he was an awesome guy. He doesn't work for them anymore, but he's he was like my go to guy and they were they're always so nice and the drum kit that they the drums and the and, and the snares that they made for me were woo, very nice there's a bell brass snare drum that i got from them that i still play to this day yeah i still play it and it's just like i have a dw drum i have a lp land percussion drum i have a pdp snare drum but that bell brass sjc will still be a very I'll hug that thing and be like, I love you, man. I love you so much. I'll never let go. Um, so shout out to them. And I, I haven't talked to Mike. It's been a few, it's been a few years since I've said, said, Hey to Mike, but I think he'd be stoked to know that like, I still have a soft spot for, yeah. for JC. He's, he was so nice, especially when like, I eventually did get the DW endorsement and I informed that I was just like, I'm, I'm going to be going this route. And like, trying my luck with them. He, um, you know, he reached out and, and said, thank you for everything. And he was super kind. And I, that meant a lot. That was so cool to be like, yo, I totally, I, I totally understand it. I respect it. Thank you for all your years. and Good luck with everything. I was just like, dude, you're awesome. Yeah. So cool to hear from a business owner, you know? Right. <laughs> that you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. That you're leaving. Like, <laughs> Yeah, man, and that and that kind of does play a big part of like why I, why I'll never get rid of that Bill Brass SJC, and I'll, I'll still what you know still bring it out to play live shows or like at home and stuff like that. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. So what's it like with you, um, your relationship with DW now, like um, being mm-hmm. a new artist on on the map with them, like. Two of, or a couple of the guys I know, I told you I worked for a cartridge company called Drum Paradise here, and a couple yeah. of our guys there um, are DW endorsers, like Rich Redmond and uh, mm-hmm. Brian Pruitt, my friend Garrett Goodwin's a DW guy, and cool. they all have, you know, above the nicest comp, uh, the nicest compliments about the company. Um, mm-hmm. So what's that like for you, like having been on the rejected list yeah. <laughs> and now on the accepted list? What, what's, um, what's that been like for you? It's been awesome. Like everyone from the people that like answer like base question emails, yeah, all the way up to like John Good, like the actual like guy that's going out into the world and like finding crazy trees and like the most exotic places <laughs> and like from from that end to the one end of the spectrum to that to the high the higher end of the spectrum, they're all super kind and they're all super appreciative of kind of like the yin and yang of the business this is like you have to respect the, right. the people that are playing the product and, you have, and we have to respect the people that are like running the ship and allowing us to yeah to have a real grasp on the fact that for for this entire drum company for this entire thing to work in a positive successful upward movement we all have to be 
we all have to respect each other, be kind to each other, and work together to become like a better, a better. Let's all grow together, you know, kind of, yeah, kind of mentality. Um, but yeah, I, I love, I love all the guys that that I'm in personal contact with, whether it's like, um, you know, marketing, advertising, or or just straight up, um, straight up art relations, or the guy, or or the guy that's. John Good, that's like handing me a piece of like almond <laughs> shell, and it's just like, be careful with it, don't break it. I'm about to like show this to like thousands of people on for a thing. I'm just like, oh, I don't oh, care. Geez. Oh, it's cool. This is gonna look cool on a drum. Get this out of my hand. Yeah. I'm break the thing, and then he's gonna kick me off of his, <laughs> off, of his uh, off the off the roster list. Yeah. So, it's been nothing, nothing but awesome, and. Uh, yeah, I, lo- I love the company, man. I I feel like I don't really have to go. I, I don't really no. I don't want to try for anything. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's just like that's it, man. Because I they, I think they uh they take real consideration on who they bring on, mm-hmm. and it it seems like they want it. They want career drummers, not kind of like a one hit wonder or like a guy that will play for a little bit and then leave. They like want. They try to get guys that they see like an actual future in, which is super motivating for me, which yeah. helps me push for, you know, something ends, like it just happened to me, band right. ends, yeah. you don't stop, keep going, find yeah. something else. It's interesting to to hear you say that because um, my, on the Drum Chats podcast that my co-host uh, Dave Douglas from Reliant K, that mm-hmm. he and I do bi-monthly, um, we were talking about companies and the differences and it seems like there's two like categories. There's the custom market and then there's the series market. And it seems like Mm -hmm. SJC is like the top dog in the custom market who is now branching into the series line for Sweetwater or wherever. And then you got DW who is top dog in the series market who mm-hmm. also does custom work for their artists. And so it's, mm-hmm. so it's interesting to see both of those guys doing the same exact thing, but in different capacities, I guess. Because you'll never see DW make a Jaws kit. And you'll yeah. never... And <laughs> I don't think that you'll ever see SJC go pull trees that have been sunken in lakes over in Russia for <laughs> years and make drums out of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and both are masterminds, like... For Mike, oh, yeah. and, for Mike and his guys to have the artistic ability with their paint jobs and engraving and all that stuff is one thing. And then you've got John Good, who's Frankenstein of drums and mm-hmm. engineering and bringing science to drums is just wild to me. Like I, I met John a couple of years ago, and a couple of the guys here who, who endorse them have just spoken so highly of him. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like he really started something incredible. But what's interesting too is you're talking about the guys who like are career drummers. It's interesting that um, you're kind of like like uh, another Adam Willard who who when OCDP kind of stopped being a business, he was endorsing DW Hardware and pedals, yeah, solely because he was playing Orange County drums, uh-huh. and then he moved to DW altogether and plays their shells now too. Um, did you? Uh, were you a DW hardware user? Yes. Like beforehand, but that was, was that wasn't a deal though, right? Like you. No, just that was okay. Yeah, that was that wasn't a deal. No, that was. I've always been a DW guy. Like first, first legit kick pedal was a five thousand, and then the first legit double kick, like where I learned how to play double kick, was a DW five thousand so it's always been that i've had slews of different like sands and whatnot like pearls and i've, I've tried out tom and stuff but i've never i have never had a dw hardware stand you know up and like break on me of, of any kind so at a very young age i, I learned that dw hard, hardware specifically was very much in my opinion superior that's okay like i i know but I do have respect for like the Pearls and the Tamas and even like the Mapex, like the other drum companies that are kind of at like the DW level. Right. The bigger companies, they 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 do have their shit down. Like obviously, like people that swear by Pearl 
everything Pearl, every, you know, people that swear by everything Tama. Like, I totally understand that. I'm just, I'm just team, D- I'm just team DW, but I respect it. I respect <laughs> everything else. You know? I hear you. That I was the same way. The first pedal that I bought, like the good pedal, was a a five thousand single, mm-hmm. and um and then just over time, because money was tight, you like start buying the hi hat stands and the the cymbal stands and snare stands and all that stuff. And oh yeah, um yeah, dude. I feel like if you can take a piece of hardware and drop it off a building and it doesn't break, you've got you've got some yeah. good hardware. <laughs> it seems like the is nine thousand series can do is that. Is there a product video somewhere out there that someone did that? <laughs> I kind of want to do it now. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to try sure, it out. I'm sure they have. <laughs> they got our symbols. The symbol stands. They don't break <laughs> ever. Well, let's talk about your kit. What uh, what size? What sizes do you use? Um, with this DW kit, for instance. On the DW kit, mm-hmm. it's uh, the t- the toms are uh pretty box stock in like a 12 inch, 12 by 8 and 16 by uh 14. Mm-hmm. Um, for the two toms and then the kick drums, 20 by 22. So it's a little bit, it's, it's longer. Yeah. It's a little bit longer. Um, and that kit is a Royal Ebony. That's what the wood is. Oh, yeah. That's Royal Ebony wrap. Mm-hmm. Um, but the shells are cherry. Nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's just that. And I've, I've had, that was my first EW kit and that's what I've been playing now for the past four years okay and you said your main <laughs> snare is your bell brass the sjc one uh no i i rotate through i rotate through a lot of snares um i have i have a i have a pdp copper over steel i have a nice. um oh what's the other one i have uh, that's the only one from dw slash pdp that i have um i just picked up a, a latin percussion um snare recently it's called the Bonda. That. Yeah, yeah the Bonda snare which is like made for that style of music cool and which is you know latin latin percussion so just by me saying it's built by latin percussion you know it's like different you know international you know styles of music and it's built it's same it's it's built like a marching drum in the sense of having having a shitload of lugs, so it's very tight. Yeah. But uh, I learned that if you if you slap like a coated head on it, and mm-hmm. you, you can get you can get more of like a lower tone out of it, and then you play it in a rock band setting, it's just like holy shit! And people are like, "What is that?" Like I've never like I've never seen that, and that's that was kind of the point of like thinking about using that snare in a in a live setting. Because um, I recently finally visited um, DW headquarters out in California, mm-hmm. and I was I was being shown around the uh, the showroom, and then we came to like the LP Latin because um, Latin percussion is under the DW umbrella. I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, including okay. like Gibraltar. Gibraltar's under that. Uh, Gretsch is under it. That, yeah, and. Um, Crazy enough, I think it's Ovation, like guitars. Like the like, guitars? <laughs> yeah, they're under that umbrella. It's crazy, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, so Latin Percussion's in there, and like I'm like Steve Vega, uh, an A&R for DW, showing me all the kit. It's in the showroom, and then we get to the LP section, and I'm like looking at the snare, and I'm hitting it. I'm like, what is this snare? It's just like a thing for like... You know, I'm, I'm band, band, a band of music, no, band of music. Uh, <laughs> it's like he showed me a video of it, and it's kind of like you know, Latin based. And I'm like, has anyone ever hit this thing for like rock music? Because if I really take a rim shot crack at it, if I'm like, you know, playing like a, you know, it's like a simple four 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 beat, that would snap and would yeah. sound awesome. And he was just like, good idea. Let me introduce you to the uh, A and R for LP. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. And um, he was nice. He was he 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 liked the entertained the idea. And uh, I think he was um, playing off of the whole Connor Dennis of Beartooth mm-hmm. has gotten really into uh, the the um, what's the drum the floor tom the, the oh the like the 
like street can or uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, trash drum or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Everyone else knows the name of it. It's just not coming to me right this <laughs> second. Um, but like, I think he would. He was he was thinking about that because he knew Census Fail was like a part of that realm of style of music, you right. know. Yeah. So it's just like he kind of saw that as a, I think the A&R for Air, LP saw that as an opportunity to break in a one of their products into this type of world. Yeah. And it's cool because I took that he gave me the snare and I took that snare and I sampled it. I did I did samples with a uh, record producer for like a sample pack that'll be coming out. Nice. So I sampled it and then that became the record producer's um, his name's Dan Corniff. He said that was his favorite snare, one of his favorite snares he sampled. So I'm like, okay, it sounds good on record. And then I took it on tour with me. And then to, there was like mixed reviews at first. I didn't always play with it on, on the tour, but like in hindsight, I think that was like one of the best sounding snares. And nice. a lot of people were commenting on it, being like, this sounds awesome. So I was just like, this is a hit. It sounds good on record, and it also sounds good on um, in a live setting. So yeah, I think, I think we're on to something here. <laughs> is it is it a fourteen so. by eight? What what's the dimensions yeah, on? Yeah, dude, it's 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 deep. It's very deep. Yeah, Jeez. And, and it usually comes with a, a clear head on it, just to get like right. the really really high tones of it. So and I'm trying to not you know I'm trying to bring it down a little bit, so it's just more of a more of a fat punch yeah on it. so like throwing like a uh, uh, like a Remo Emperor X yep. um, or like a, something lower on it it kind of oh yeah it's good I yeah. like it it hurt it hurts my hand though I have to say it it hurt the living hell out of my hand like double the amount of blisters and everything only because it uh, the amount of uh, tension that's on it because it's built like a marching drum oh, stair oh uh huh you're hitting like, the tabletop pretty much exactly